I do this. Smash, Yay, we're here. <laughs> Hopefully you all can see us. Maybe you could give us a thumbs up if anybody's there. Um, so I'm Ashley Collins and this is Suzanne Lee. And we're both co-owners of Emerald Doulas um, here in Durham. We're having some technical difficulties with our... I'm going to knock the whole table over, sorry. That's good. I just, I love having coffee on my laptop. <laughs> um, oh, there we go. Yeah, that's better. <clears throat> sorry, we're trying to fit both of our bodies in the small frame. It's not an easy feat. Um, so today we're talking about um, newborn sleep, and we're hoping that some of you will chime in with your questions about um, your own newborn sleep questions. Does it happen? Can it happen? How do you get more of it? Um, and we're going to be unboxing towards the end one of our absolute most favorite products as doulas, the glorious dome sound dome machine. Dome sound machine. Ugh, it's the Cadillac of sound <laughs> machines. Um, so I thought maybe until some people kind of jump on. Maybe people can give us a thumbs up or a smiley face or something to let us know you're here. Um, and we will maybe start with a couple of questions that people submitted beforehand. Sounds good. Um, so someone asked, um, they've been home with their newborn daughter for eight nights. That first week is yeah. rough. Um, they, she slept a three hour stretch the very first night, but since then doesn't sleep at night. That sounds pretty typical. Um, she starts getting super fussy around 9 p.m. and remains awake and fussy until around 7 a.m. That's, that's a 10-hour stretch. That's pretty bad. <laughs> that's painful. That's painful. Sorry, parents. Out there. I know, I know, I know. Um, I'm hoping maybe there's some, like, snooziness happening in that 10 hours for their, for their sake. Yeah. Um, they've tried all possible sleeping surfaces. <laughs> the bassinet, the pack-and-play, the swing. Another swing borrowed from a friend, because if one swing doesn't work, you got to do the other. The other one, you never know. Um, and nothing seems to work. Uh, we nurse on demand. Is this normal? Yes. And also no. Yeah, it's normal-ish. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is normal for newborn sleep? What's a normal newborn sleep pattern? A uh, normal newborn sleep pattern is that newborns sleep in 45-minute cycles. Mm -hmm. And so they have a deep sleep cycle that's about 30 minutes and then a light sleep that's about 15. And if you're really on top and lucky, then you've got a newborn that will sleep through two of those full cycles. which So an hour and a half. Sleep for about an hour and a half per sleep. And then um, they should be up to you know wake up to feed. And then um, maybe be awake for a few more minutes, maybe 30 minutes, and then it's probably time to go back down to sleep again. So yeah. what often happens with families is that they are having, well, they're working so hard just trying to get all the things together, feeding the baby, and there might be other elements involved with that so that they might be missing those early sleep cues. And so you might be having... Um, an overtired baby on your hands at that point. So you might be yeah. missing those early sleep cues and then the baby gets more stimulated. Maybe grandma and grandpa are there or you're trying to do other things or you've got the television on all the time. Or a two-year-old. Or a two-year-old or bright lights. <laughs> or, you know, there's just a lot of different things that could um, kind of contribute to mm -hmm. having an overtired newborn. So I think for you the key is to just keep doing what you're doing but really look for those sleep cues um, Do you want to talk about what sleep cues are? Yeah. Because I think they're really hard for, first of all, first-time parents. They're subtle. Even second-time parents. They're very subtle. And then when you're busy and you're trying to, like, think of a hundred other things Hi, to do. Hi, Katie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Um, it's really hard to notice that along with everything else that's going on in your life. And so um, for a newborn, a lot of times if you're sitting there holding your newborn and you're looking at them and they're having that moment with you where they're just gazing at you and you're talking to them and it's really sweet. So sweet. And then all of a sudden they just start to like look off into the distance and stop making eye contact with you. Um, if they start just kind of scrunching up their face and looking uncomfortable or yawning, those are some early signs that it's time to probably just swaddle that little one back up, put them back down in the bassinet or wherever you want them to sleep, and then just help them get to sleep. Um, sucking on a pacifier is very helpful. Mm. They can suck on a pacifier, they can suck on your finger, they can nurse a little bit, um, but those are some things that are kind of a good combo of helping them get back down to sleep. A good swaddle, a tight swaddle around the shoulders, and then maybe sucking on something can be very helpful. Do you have a favorite swaddle blanket? 
I don't. I think it really depends. Like, if you've got the mm-hmm. Houdini baby that just, like, <laughs> busts out of everything. I think the Houdini baby is, I think, every baby at first. At some point, Every baby yeah. is, a, is a Houdini baby. And those are the babies where you swaddle up, and then even as you're swaddling, you see their little hands creep up like this. <laughs> or um, or as you're swaddling, and you, like, lay them down, and suddenly they've got one arm out. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> or they're in a miracle blanket, maybe, and you look over, and they've managed to get both arms out of the bottom. <laughs> Uh, that's, yeah, like up from underneath. It's a Houdini one. So totally. I, I think for newborns with new parents, Swaddle Me is really nice because it's just a really simple design. Um, and it's like a little baby sack. You stick them in it and you wrap them up real tight across the top. Mm-hmm. And I tend to really like that. I like the gauze blankets too. Um, but yeah, I have like, one of those out. Yeah, we do. Because they're so, I think they're big and stretchy, which is really lovely. Oh, where did Suzanne go? Oh, there I am. Hello. <laughs> Peek-a-boo. Um, yeah, they're really nice, but it does take a little bit of practice. I think a lot of new parents are a little um, intimidated about how tight the swaddle should be. Um, it should be really firm across their shoulders, and their hips should be loose. And so it takes a little practice to get that. It Even does. I have trouble doing it, so it's not like a rookie thing. It just takes a little practice, and sometimes you kind of have to yeah. redo it from time to time just to keep them tucked in nice and so. well, What about the newborns? We, I, I probably feel like one out of every three families we work with will say, oh, my baby hates to be swaddled. Is that true? I tend to think no. I think that hey, Jennifer. they might be swaddling when the baby's like super fussy and overtired. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like with baby wearing and with swaddling, mm-hmm. you know, they may they may complain a lot while you're doing it. But mm-hmm. if you kind of stick with it a few more minutes, do some bouncing, do some walking around, the Lab shushing. shushing. Um, those are the things that kind of like bring it all together for them and kind of get them back into that like nice. Um, sleepy and drowsy zone that where you want them to be <laughs> totally all right so newborn sleep um typical newborn sleep is they're they're going down they're sleeping for about hopefully 45 minutes and then what are some signs that maybe your baby is transitioning out of that first sleep cycle and moving into the second and what can parents do to help get themselves that extra second sleep cycle yeah. so you'll definitely hear them uh oh. So <laughs> you'll definitely you'll definitely hear them getting out of that sleep cycle. So okay. they start making all those grunty sounds yeah. and you know, you think, oh no, they're crying, but they're not crying. They're just sort of waking up and making noise. And totally. so what you could do is just I like lay my hands on them. Actually, I'm glad you brought this baby. So can you hold the baby for me? Yes. So I I'll be um, the bassinet. <laughs> Baby's in the bassinet, and a lot of times I'll just put both hands on top of their shoulders, even though they're swaddled, and just kind of like, just give a nice firm pressure, maybe like rock them back and forth a little bit, maybe put the passy passy back in their mouth a little bit, and see if that'll just help them relax. If you feel your baby's body like this, you can feel them kind of tense up, and then you can just sort of feel them relax. And sometimes they'll make a a big deep breath, and they'll just, like that. And um, then you can just sort of like take your hands off and then float out of the room. If you can. You do like a ninja roll out of your bedroom. Yeah, do a ninja roll. (laughs) I wish I had the ability to levitate. Um, That way I could just sort of like float out of the room when I was a parent, especially even now as a doula. Totally. You never know how squeaky your floors are until you have a newborn who's trying to sleep at your house. Or how poppy your ankles are. (laughs) Poppy ankles. So it's a totally it's a mess. So, especially with new newborns, is this idea of a forty-five minute sleep cycle maybe two forty-five minute sleep cycles reality? It, it's new a, newborn. It's it just depends. I feel like um, during that first week, it's just all over the place. Like yeah. you bring a really sleepy baby home, and then by night three or four, that's when milk production starts for moms, and that's when babies mm-hmm. are in, instinctually wanting to nurse a lot more and really ramping up that feeding cycle. And so trying to transition their milk. Yeah, and so they can have marathons where there might be a couple of nights where that baby just wants to nurse and nurse and nurse all the time. And it's very exhausting, but it's very normal. And that's what happens. Yeah, that's good to hear. What about the difference in daytime sleep and nighttime sleep for newborns? Is there such a thing as day and nights for newborns? I don't think they know the difference. I don't. I I tend to really encourage families to have a really great sleep space set up for your baby no matter where it is so if it's in a dark Mm -hmm. you know it's in their nursery and that's where you want them to sleep or it's in the bassinet in your bedroom beside the bed 
Um, make that a really cozy sleep cave and try not to have your baby sleeping in the middle of the living room with the TV going and everything else in the household going. I just mm -hmm. feel like it sets up everybody for a better sleep. Mm -hmm. um, sleep hygiene basically and so when your baby's ready to sleep just swaddle them up put them in the bassinet by your bed if that's where they are or put them in the crib switch on the sound machine mm -hmm. make it nice and cool in the room keep it really comfortable in there babies don't need to be really hot in a hot environment um, it increases the risk for SIDS it does it does and so you don't have to crank up the heat in the house just because you have a newborn in the house just keep it comfortable for you swaddle your baby up and then put a little hat on that mm -hmm. can be really effective sometimes babies are a little bit chilly at night and then they tend to wake up so if you have a nice swaddle put on a hat those of you who live really in downtown there are bungalows that have like 1920s floors and drafty windows that we're talking to you yes absolutely <laughs> <laughs> So, and you know, and I, I know a lot of overnights, the houses get cooler mm -hmm. um, because we set them to be cooler because we're more comfortable like with a, a heavier blanket and a cooler house. And so that's kind of how babies mm -hmm. are as well. So they like to have a nice warm blanket. But um, Babies are people. They are. <laughs> <laughs> Newsflash. <laughs> I think it's... And so they have their own needs. Totally. And I think that's where a lot of times, in my experience as a doula, that parents sometimes confuse... Um, a baby who's waking up with a baby who's transitioning in a sleep cycle or a baby who's just getting comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. We as adults and as bigger people who can um, express our, you know, what's making us irritated, maybe some others better better than others, <laughs> um, we, you know, get up and we fluff our pillows and we go to the restroom and we straighten our blankets and we're like, oh, we don't like these pajamas, so maybe we'll change into something else. And actually, I prefer 800 thread count sheets and maybe you prefer 600 <laughs> thread count sheets. <laughs> and so, hi, Sarah. Um, and so, um, I think um, a lot of times we forget that our newborns, even our new newborns, they're people and they're mm -hmm. humans and they don't have the voice to tell us that they prefer not this adorable jumper from grandma or they don't like this particular type of swaddle. Maybe they have to go to the bathroom. Maybe they're just like straightening themselves out to get comfortable in their bassinet. Um, I think all of those are kind of the same things we do as people and our first instinct, at least mine was, and my little girl was first home from the hospital, she would make any noise and I'd be like, oh, mm -hmm. she's waking up. Mm -hmm. And then here I am picking up this baby who probably was going to go back to sleep. Yeah. Um, and maybe that was my fault. <laughs> so um, maybe let's talk about where babies sleep. Um, and I think a lot of us, before, before we become parents, before babies actually join our family. Um, hi, Christine. Um, before animals actually join our families, uh, we have this idea in our head of where our babies are going to sleep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a co-sleeping parent. My baby's going to sleep in the crib from the very beginning. Um, and then you get the baby that you get. <laughs> Sometimes. It's not the baby that you envision. <laughs> right. That's your, like, envisions. yeah, and you're, like, before you become a parent baby. Um, I wish Victoria was here so she could tell you all about the baby of her future someday. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so maybe talk a little bit about um, adjusting expectations with reality. And yeah. being flexible in where your baby sleeps. Well, I have to be honest and say that my son is six, and we still have musical beds. At I was going to say we're probably um, not maybe the experts. <laughs> we both have six and seven year olds who occasionally sleep in our beds. So I feel like it's just sort of um, night times can be a progress. Yeah. And so you know they don't all want to sleep in their room by themselves. Um, but they may not all need to sleep in your room with you. I mean, it, it could be all over the place totally. and one night could be different. So I think it's just, um, it's good to keep an open mind about things, especially at night. And if you have, um, if you're with a partner and you're worried about your partner's sleep mm -hmm. and sometimes I encourage families to just kind of sleep separately a little bit just for a few weeks just to kind of get over that. It's a temporary season of life. Yeah, it's a season of life. This is not a forever thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes I've worked with families who sleep better when their baby is just maybe outside the door in the hallway because they have a super noisy baby that just won't stop grunting all night long and they keep waking up every time that happens and I've yeah. also seen babies who sleep better separate from their parents so um, I feel like it's just open to experimentation to see mm -hmm. what works for your family and there's not one um, perfect method 
or perfect place to sleep in the house. I feel like it's just open for experimentation. Absolutely. I, I agree with that. And I think um, a lot of times we have families um, who who maybe through society or through their friends or family, you kind of shape where they want their baby to sleep before their baby is born. And then, you know, maybe you have your heart set on being a co-sleeping parent. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm speaking from personal experience here. I don't know. <laughs> and... Um, and you get this baby who maybe your baby was like born really prematurely and they're really grunty all the time and they sound like maybe, I don't know, like a tiny elephant all the time. <laughs> yep. And it's absolutely impossible to sleep next to that baby yeah. because the baby is sleeping fine. They're maybe, or maybe they're not. Maybe you're a noisy sleeper. Mm -hmm. Maybe you snore. Maybe your partner snores. Um, maybe you have a dog that also sleeps in your bedroom that shakes off and, you know, licks constantly all night long. I mean, again, babies are humans and they hear things as well. <laughs> um, and so I think it's important that you, you keep that, um, expectation and when it meets with reality, a really fluid and flexible. flexible I think that's thing. just a good overall parenting strategy <laughs> because I don't, true. I feel like you go into parenting <laughs> thinking your child is going to be one way and then they just totally surprise you and they do something. Completely well, you're your different. best parent before you have a baby. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> And with other people's kids too. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'm always, I'm always the best parent to other people's children. Yes, yes. So, and I even In my tell mind. my clients, I'm like, tell, take what I take with a grain of salt. Like these are just suggestions and things to experiment with. But ultimately, you're the you're the expert, and you know exactly what to do. Totally. What about, let's talk about families who maybe have a baby who's sleeping in their room um, and they are interested in transitioning them to a crib. Um, what, or as one person said, without touching parents. <laughs> without touching parents. I, I think there's two yeah. separate questions, but also kind of the same thing. I think if you're, if you're doing some co-sleeping with your baby or if they're doing a sidecar situation or a bassinet, um, I always talk to parents about making sleep changes during the day because it's much easier to do something new during the day than mm -hmm. trying to initiate some kind of new plan in the middle of the night because nobody is their best self in the middle of the night and nobody feels yeah. patient enough to deal with, you know, the repercussions of making new changes at night. So I suggest that you take that part of the day, maybe it's that first morning nap, to implement any new changes. So if you're going to move your baby um, out of the room, with the ultimate goal of moving them out of the room, then try mm -hmm. sleeping them that first nap time in their crib, in their room, or wherever it is that you want them to be. Because I feel like you're gonna feel better about making those changes because you're gonna feel a little bit fresher, hopefully, and it'll be a little bit easier. And I suggest that you try in like 20 or 30 minutes. Like mm -hmm. if that baby just keeps popping up every time you put them in the crib because they're used to sleeping in the rock and play, then you just try that for 20 or 30 minutes and then ultimately have them nap wherever they sleep best because eventually they are going to get used to it and eventually mm -hmm. they're going to actually fall asleep and sleep in the crib um, and hopefully not on a body. It's true. Yeah. You have a baby that really likes to sleep on a body. One of my favorite tips is to, um, is, and you're trying to get them to sleep in a surface that's not apparent. Um, I find one of the things that wakes babies up the most is not necessarily that they're sleeping in the crib. It's that transition from a warm, comfortable mama or papa chest mm -hmm. And now they're being moved into a cold crib sheet. Um, it's a little, it's a little jarring <laughs> if you've never had that happen. Um, and so, um, a lot of times I'll um, suggest to families that they take a heating pad or a rice sock or a hot water bottle if you have one of those. That's still a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think maybe a heating pad is more likely. No, uh, I've been using a hot water bottle. Have you? Yes, <laughs> yes. In my family's houses, I even bought one this winter because it works so well. Oh, that's good to know. Sounds okay, good. great. So <laughs> something that slightly warms yeah. uh, you want to get and um, as you're going through your going to sleep routine so maybe you're swaddling maybe you're nursing maybe you're shushing if you're making the parenting choice to hold your baby until they fall asleep um, then you're you've put the the heating element something in their crib to sort of pre-warm that sleep surface mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to remove that <laughs> before you lay your baby down in it so they're moving from warm comfortable chest parent chest mm -hmm. or grandparent chest or caretaker chest onto a warm sheet and it doesn't quite wake them up as much as it normally yeah. does i always felt like my son had like oh, a totally. wake up button in his back because as soon totally. as i'd lay him down on his back his eyes would pop open and i'd be like <laughs> no no again. they can totally fool you too because you'll think that they're asleep and you're holding them and you're like you're definitely asleep definitely now asleep. and you go to lay them down and they're like bing <laughs> 
a little turkey timer. And then you die inside a little bit. And then... <laughs> so. Especially if it's like 3 a.m. and yeah. you've been at this since, I don't know, 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty exhausting it's night. Hard. It's hard. Totally. Another thing I like, along with the warming the sheets, are these new fleece. Oh, they may not be that new. They seem new to me, but the fleece sheets that are oh, like yeah. really soft and fleecy. Minky. Minky sheets yeah. or whatever. Those just feel warm all the time. And I like a set for my own bed personally, but I don't know if they make them that big. <laughs> but I they're think really nice. might combust. We're kind of hot sleepers. <laughs> um, I agree. Sometimes it's just that those cold, the cold sheet and the cold surface is um, a little bit, a little bit jarring for yeah. them, especially a baby that really responds well to that to that warm sleep surface of a parent and then you can use Suzanne's trick as you're lying them down on that warm sheet and sort of holding them when I lay a baby down that's swaddled you know that maybe their hands are kind of up by their chest or they're or they're down in a swaddle um, I'm kind of lying them down like this keeping my hand kind of on them a little bit and maybe doing that sort of slight side to side and then sort of like like one finger at a time. And one finger at a time. <laughs> I do one finger at a time too. <laughs> to try and get them um, to to stay there, and it usually works pretty well. Yeah, it does. Totally, it really does. Um, okay. Well, should we talk about sleep, like spaces, like what an ideal sleep space looks like, including having a really good quality sound machine? Yeah, I think um, what I encourage parents to do is to install blackout shades on that sleep the space, room, yeah. wherever that room is for you, or, or just getting that room as dark as possible. I know that I've recently listened to some discussions and some families were putting foil on their windows <laughs> because it was cheaper and they were foiling out their windows. I don't know if that's something you really want to do, but it I works I mean, maybe you're people. a doomsday prepper and that's your thing. Exactly, I think, <laughs> yeah, some apartments are like, no, don't put foil on your windows. But, um, <laughs> For those of you who don't know my husband, we call him the captain of the tinfoil hat club. This is right up his alley. <laughs> yeah, there's, anyway, there's that's no, really funny. So no, some, some sort of light man. blocking. Some light blocking, <laughs> good blinds, <laughs> even sometimes just a little crack of light. And that was kind of part of the discussion was yeah. toddler sleep. And even if there's like a little crack of light coming out of those like um, blackout curtains, mm -hmm. that still was enough to wake up their, their child. Um, so I would definitely get that room nice and dark and cool and make that bed as safe and comfortable as possible mm -hmm. and then have um white noise yeah white noise is our friend do we want to talk about our favorite white noise machine yes. so um for those of you who do not know what a what a investment white noise machine what a good investment a white noise machine is let me tell you um not only does it help um, a baby who is having trouble transitioning in that 45 minute sleep cycle, transitioning to the next sleep cycle, because maybe that in that moment, they're in that lighter stage of sleep. Maybe that's when your two year old decides to knock down a, po a pile of building blocks or the, the mailman who visits totally. you every day rings the bell three times just so he can see the baby. Absolutely. I've seen this happen in houses yeah. and I'm like, have you not killed the mailman yet? <laughs> I would probably do it. <laughs> it would not be my mailman. He's not very nice. But, but I hear that other people have normal yeah. mailmen. Um, and so um, having a quality sound machine can also be the difference between, um, between a deep sleep and sort of a light kind of fluttery sleep. Um, and... There is a difference in a good quality sound machine and a not good quality absolutely. sound machine. Absolutely. The ones that we really absolutely hate the most are some of the apps. Some the some, apps, some apps sure. are really great. Some <clears throat> apps that are really maybe free or cheap are on a loop. And you can definitely hear the end of the you beginning hear the click. of that loop. And um, that's actually pretty jarring in a sleep brain. And so I feel like if you have a nice continuous noise... Perhaps one without the sound of orcas because that just creeps me out. Or, or, or as we say, the, <laughs> the ones that have like a rainforest soundtrack and mm -hmm. you're like, okay, okay, here comes the bird, here comes the bird, here comes the bird, <laughs> there's the bird. And then you're like waiting for the next bird. Yeah. Um, that Your brain is, you know, sort of subconsciously waiting for mm -hmm. those noises and you're waiting to hear that click of the loop kind of yeah. move over. Um, so preferably one. And let me just say, if you have an overnight postpartum delay in your house, and I hope that you do, <laughs> if you have a baby who chooses not to sleep very often, um, and your doula is the one who is spending time awake for, um, you know, eight hours a night with you, um, your doula greatly appreciates 
I she could probably tell machine. you. She can probably tell you how great your sewing machine is. Yes, some of our postpartum doulas <laughs> even carry these dome sound machines because they're the only ones on the market that have a have a fan. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> have a fan that that blows air um, and not blows air it just makes the noise by moving air so there's no loop I know Suzanne you were at a house once um, in the middle of the night who had a heartbeat sound machine um, oh, if you've ever business right wanted there. to feel like you oh, were inside of a heart movie <laughs> uh, listen to a heartbeat for eight hours a night is enough to sort of drive you to the brink of insanity um, so after, at that point we started carrying our own sound machines or our own sound apps because it makes such a difference. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, Dome uh, is made by a company called Marpac, and believe it or not, they're a North Carolina company. I didn't know this. Really? Yes, they're based in Wilmington, which is Stop really it. awesome. We love a North Carolina business. I hear a field trip coming on. I know. They're so great, too. Um, I uh, called them up and asked if they wanted to be a part of our birthday celebration that's happening next week, um, April 8th at 2 o'clock. And they said, yes, also, let me send you a sound machine to review. And I said, awesome. Um, so they sent us one, and I thought what well, would be kind of fun for us to sort of look at it, and we'll tell you why, why we love them sure, so much. Yeah. Unboxing videos. This I know. is from my son. He loves to watch these things. This is a thing. Oh. All right, sorry, my phone is being kind of weird. Ooh, there we go. All right. Ooh, they sent us all kinds of stuff. Oh, my. This is pretty great, you guys. <gasps> this is the one I've been wanting to try. This is the dome. This is the one on the go. So the I think we've actually seen families come in with this on... On a car seat. On the car seat. Yeah. And I think I'm going to get one of those for my doula bag, actually. Yes. I want to try it out. Totally. We'll get to that one in just a second. But this is the That's dome the itself. Yeah, the mother of sound machine. So this is what it looks like, the dome for baby. Um, if you have a baby registry, in addition to postpartum dual support, I hope that you're going to put this on your registry. Um, because yeah. postpartum dual support and a quality sound machine are basically all you need in postpartum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe <laughs> just, I'm like, just kidding. Maybe like yeah. diapers. Diapers. And food. But, you know, basics. Basics, yeah. <laughs> so um, I thought we would open one. I was actually, I have a little plug here. I was going to plug it in so you can hear. Um, okay. One, how loud it is. Because I think it's surprising to people how loud their noise machine uh -huh. should be yeah. to be effective. Um, and this is a sound machine that probably you're going to keep for, I don't know, like the rest of your baby's you're life. You're going to send it to college with your Or kid. you're going to buy another one for your own room. Yeah. Definitely. All right. So here is the sound machine. So it kind of comes in a little package. It's got oh, your sound conditioner. That's what it's called. Nice. I love that. Serious sleep. You'll love how you sleep. I agree. I, I think you will sleep wonderfully with this. So um, it's got a little information about the safety for babies, which is probably very safe. Um, so it comes out of a little box. What is this? Oh, oh I did it oh, upside down. instructions on the inside of the box. Ooh, I like that. Oh, I think we opened it upside down. That's why. Mm, that Who happens. Knew? Who knew? <laughs> so it's got right. some sound. It's, it's got easy some... to use. That's what's great about it. It's so easy to use. You can so... operate it with your feet. Literally. <laughs> We've done this before. We've done this before. Too. If you're holding a baby, you can just snap it with your toe. So this is the this is the dome. It plugs in. As you can see. Um, and it's got a couple of different adjustments for pitches and for loudness control or what volume control. Mm -hmm. um, so you can twist the top. Here, or you can twist the side. Yeah, I'll plug it in. Here, Let's hold on one second. Suzanne's gonna plug it in for us. Do any of you have dome machines? Oh, you got the plug. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. I'm prepped. You're ready. I was not gonna bend over on it. <laughs> plug this in. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna plug it in so you can hear what this is gonna sound like. You ready? Um, in theory, that's what we're gonna do. Here we go. Ooh, Alyssa says she loves her dome. Yes, it does. So that's the best thing I think about this. Hold on, let me just show you really quickly how easy it is to turn on and off. Well, that's low. That's low, and you can do like that's off. Yeah. So it's even. So this is even newer than the one we have at our house because we have them. Even doulas have them mm -hmm. um, because it's got a low. It's got a high, and you can adjust the loudness and the pitch, which I think is pretty great. I love it. I love these suckers. Totally. <laughs> um, so Alyssa says that um, it dulls the random baby sleep noises. Here's the thing that no one tells you about newborns. They're not 
they're noisy. They're so noisy. And even when they're dead asleep, they're really loud. Um, those grunting noises, that adjusting, that kind of shifting themselves around, it's not for the faint of heart. No, no. And I could hear my son, I, I realized, like, he could make one little sniff, and I would wake up and know that it was time to nurse. So the other noises aside from that yeah. just meant that I was waking up quite a lot. Totally. To for him. And so this helps not only your baby get some sleep, but it also helps you as the parent. Yes. Only wake up for those actual need to sleep yes. noises. I need to <laughs> need to nurse noises or need to feed noises or need some attention. Um, so let's also look at the oh, the hush. A little bit. I'm excited about this. One. Very Sorry, excited I'm about this. Too soon. There we go. <laughs> So this is this. a portable sound machine, uh, which if you have a baby who really responds well to sound machines or to white noise, um, this is the this is the product for you, I think. So let me just see if we can open this. Um, let's see if I can open this the correct way. <laughs> Sorry, Don. Um, having oh, whoops. All right. Let's see. It goes over this. Well, they take their product packaging very seriously in my mm, bag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not going to break. So maybe you'll put these like two things on your on your registry: postpartum doula support and a portable sound machine, sound machine. and a sound machine for home. You may even get like a couple of sound machines for one for the nursery and one for your room. Yes. All right, Suzanne, you want to unbox that one? So this All is the right. mobile one. Oh my goodness! Um, so it's really adorable. Look at that. <laughs> Super adorable. Totally. It's got the volume on the side. So this one is not, I think this one's probably just electronically generated sound it as opposed to the dome, the bigger dome, which is um, just air. air. Hopefully it'll be the same sounds. Yeah, but you, we, it's it not great. Yeah, it looks like it charges through a USB. USB port, which is pretty cool. So you don't have to deal with batteries. Or, fine, or, char or losing batteries, but you do have to remember to, to plug it in and charge it. And you get Ooh. the little, like, hook. Oh, yeah. Hook it on everything. So maybe if you have a baby that hates the car but loves white noise, this is the product mm -hmm. you buy. You just clip it. Clip hi. It everywhere. We're live. Victoria is here. Live. You want to say hi? <laughs> <laughs> um, would you like to come and geek out with us? Victoria is here, by the way. Ooh, we, got, we, we, got, we got the dome sound dome. machine. Hi. Hold on. Let me show oh, you, Victoria. Favorite. Say hi, Victoria. Hi. It's morning <laughs> meeting at Emerald Doulas. <laughs> How does have to show up? <laughs> well, right now we're just talking about, oh, yeah, Hanya, I know. Yeah, they're a dome family as oh, well. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Totally. Do you want to tell them why you love the dome so much? Because it reminds me of my therapist. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just the best sound. I'm a, like, sensory, I'm, like, a nervous sensory person. Yeah. So, like, the vacuum makes me a little crazy. Like, different sounds like that really bug me. And it's just such a nice round sound, and it doesn't repeat itself. Yes. Like it does sort of its own thing. Like a fan is sometimes too high-pitched, mm -hmm. and I like that you can adjust the pitch on it. Yeah. I had one family that I, um, that he like got so addicted to the dome, <laughs> like the dad did, that the mom would have to unplug it so he would wake up. So I told them they had to get like one of those Christmas tree timers <laughs> so that it would turn off automatically so That's... that he would ever actually wake up. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, so they also sent us a, a dome to go. The hush. I didn't know they had a dome to go. Yeah. Isn't, Isn't this sweet? awesome? And does it so it charges and it then charges you with can USB? Use it? Yep. Yeah, USB. that's great because that's the new thing of like everyone has their phone tucked into the car seat with the white noise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a thing that happens at New Parent Hangout where we have um, this parade of car seats that come in. New Parent Hangouts are a totally free hangout for new parents here at our office Wednesdays at eleven, where we have um, lots of parents from all walks of life come and and just share the common experience of being new parents together. Uh, it's also kind of our like test ground for new um, new products. Yes, it's battery powered, Hanya, but it charges through a USB. So you charge it and then you good untether it and it's good to go. For a period of time. I'm period of time. Suzanne's going to look to see how long it'll how long it'll last. That's fun. I can't I want to know how loud it is. Yeah. So the last couple of weeks we've had um, a parade of babies, maybe in that like eight to 12 week kind of sleep shake up that happens. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they all come in with their sound machines or phones tucked at the top of the car seat, um, trying to keep their baby asleep because they fell asleep in the yes. car, it's really um, cute. which is really fun. <laughs> totally. So do we know how long it lasts? 
It does not I say can't here. Say, I, don't, I can't say for sure. This says that it has Good three point. sound options, a bright white noise, a deep white noise, and a gentle surf. I don't know what gentle surf means. My, my guess not. is it's the waves. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe, like maybe the an, Yeah. Maybe orca that's free our, waves. An orca <laughs> free wave. <laughs> no, I know about an orca sound. Oh, yeah. It says mean, the rechargeable battery says no more batteries, electrical outlets. Is that a thing? Or white noise apps. That's good. Um, they're easy to use and operate with one hand because you're probably holding your... Yeah. Trying to go to sleep, baby, with one hand and trying to move my phone. I think Victoria's geeking out with this right now. I'm excited. This is cool. I like this. Yeah, it's so cool. And I like the little thing that you can hang it from the car seat if you need to. Well, because you can hang it off, like, the side so that it's not right. obstructing any of the safety features. Right. And it's not tucked into the car seat since we don't want stuff tucked in. Yeah. Vic uh, Hania says the other one sucks up batteries. Yeah. Let me tell you what will absolutely wake your baby up is when you have cancel, cancel. Oh, there we go. Uh, when your baby is sound asleep and you've got their car seat um, wired with this, um, with a sound machine and the batteries die. <laughs> Nothing makes you feel more sad. Um, hold on. The other thing that I didn't realize about this is that it's got an amber nightlight on the side. Oh, yeah. Um, that provides oh, just enough light nice. without Very causing cool. wakefulness. That's one thing we didn't talk about, Suzanne. Do you want to, like, talk about keeping lights low when you have a, yeah, a newborn sleeping? Yeah, at night. Um, it's really important to keep your lights low um, and just have, like, a really oh, – yeah. <laughs> we're charging this thing up. Um, and keep keep from switching on – even sometimes your your bedside lights can be too, too bright at night. So when you're waking up to so nurse to feed your thing. baby – um, I love just a little portable nightlight. Um, I have a nightlight app on my phone, so if you like to download apps, there's a lot of little nightlight apps that you can download as well. And just switch it on, and it gives you a nice low light. Um, oh, and Moonlight. Ashley's got a really good hack here. I like this is this. my favorite thing. You can get them at the Dollar Tree, um, which is mm -hmm. basically the best thing on the planet. Yeah, um, these are called Moonlights. Um, well, actually, I don't know if that's what they call them. That's what I call them. Let me rephrase that. This is what I call moonlights. Um, and what's great about it is one, it's portable, right? So it's battery powered, which I know sucks up batteries, but this is a little more controlled battery use. Mm -hmm. And um, and so you can take it with you if you're moving from room to room, but you click this on or you can put it just by the side of your bed and you can slap it in the middle of the night if you need to when you have to wake up yeah. to be with your baby. Um, and it emits this really low light. It's just enough that you can see are you grunting because you're awake or are you grunting because you're transitioning mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. sleep cycles? And it's a dollar. It's good. <laughs> it's good. I think a little, a little nightlight like, like this is really key. Um, yeah. And it keeps also keeps your sleep cycles yeah. nice and even too. Cause if you're up flashing lights and you know, turning on bright lights all the time, it kind of messes up with your chemical sleep brain as well. <laughs> totally. Do we get it to charge? Is it going to work? I don't know how long oh, it's going to take have to, to let it charge for a little bit. All right. Well, we we're going to do another do... one where we can hear the sound. Totally. In, um, in next week, we're going to be reviewing um, Merlin's Magic Sleep Suit. So maybe we'll talk about the portable sound machine at that time. Yeah. Um, so maybe you're thinking, how can I get my hands on one of these dome machines? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, our birthday party is coming up. April 8th at 2 o'clock at the Inner River. Um, if you have not received your invitation yet and you'd like to come, please let me know. I'll be happy to send it to you today. Um, you can um, win a sound machine of your very own, if you'd like, by coming to our birthday party and making a donation to the Diaper Bank of North Carolina. We're going to be collecting diapers at that time. Um, also, later today, we're going to post a review of the Dome and the Hush. Hopefully, if we get it charged, yeah, um, charged by then, sure. <laughs> on our blog. And there'll also be some instructions there on how you can win one um, through sharing on social media and um, telling us a little bit about your baby's sleep cycles. So, that's good. Any other questions? Any other thoughts? Final Hi, thoughts? Natalie. Yay, Natalie. Hey, baby. June. She's my mom so hard, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone needs one. <laughs> all right. Any other questions? No? All right. So, we'll see you all soon. Soon. You can see our blog later today. Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah. We're doing another. We're going to unbox 
one of our favorite products, the Sarah Wells bags, uh, which has become our newest obsession here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Victoria's going to be on on this one, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, and so you can check out our blog. It's www.emeralddoulas.com slash blog, uh, where you'll see our review of the Dome Sound Machine. Uh, we might even post a little video of what the, what the hush it's got two H's, so I feel compelled to say hush. <laughs> like good night moon. Like good night moon, mm -hmm, that's right. Um, and maybe we'll post a video there of um, what that sounds like and of the amber nightlight, which I'm so into. Yeah. All right. All right. See you soon. Have a good day. Smooches. Bye.